everyone, Joe here from MaxJX. Welcome to What's in Tuber. Welcome back. If this is your 10th DC Stargirl Season 3 episode review. Hope you're all out there. How you staying safe out there? It's been a very, very um, tiring week for me so far. Uh, again, I'm not trying to get too personal here. But, just, you know, it's, 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 it's nice to have an episode of Stargirl relax. You know, again, it's still pretty... Um, Sad that we are coming to a close. The story's coming to an end. But however, right now, they're, they, even with four episodes to go, it still feels like they can pull it off. They can wrap up the ship. Um, and then this episode's like, it kind of made me miss. It kind of made like, oh my God, am I feeling? Am I, am I having the feels right now? Like That's the expectations that, that I'm getting. And then as soon as I'm like, I get this understanding of like, oh, maybe... It's like, you know, this could be it. I'm like, oh, no, this is actually something else. I'm like, it's like th this season just, like, c keeps coming with the twists and turns. And I'm like, you know what? If this was the final season, all right, you're, you're doing whatever you can. Because I feel like this is the last they can stretch it into unless they go out of Blue Valley. And, and if they had gotten a season four, which I don't think they would have. I would have easily imagined it. But... Anywho, I'm actually, I was actually really, really, I really liked this episode. I really did. I thought this was a good one. I definitely, um, it's putting more of the pieces together. This wasn't an action-packed fill one, but it definitely is. It delivered the final crucial pieces that we need for, like, the final sweep of episodes to come in and, like, wrap it all home. We still have a lot of questions, but that will be answered soon. And it's just by this point, like, we really don't know uh what could really happen next we really don't know because like i w i was not expecting that ending i literally wasn't and then we got it and i was like oh shit this this is this is this is gonna be this is gonna be a good one this is gonna be this is gonna be a great one uh i want to talk about it more so let's go through the butcher recap and talk about this week's episode of dc's star girl so we begin in a weird spin-off like you know opening episode like first episode um style of like we're, we're in the crocs house the crocs are living their life you know for once um tigers is making a cake that is not nutritional um Sportsmaster is actually, you know, working on some stuff for his gym and, you know, reflecting on all of his past achievements that isn't ISA related. And Artemis is about to, uh, has applied for college and, um, and she's up for like a pretty big position in the, in the, in the university she's applying to, which she should be hearing back at any moment. Um, and so I'm very excited to see how that, that, so it's, it's, it's coming up all Crocs, but you know, the Crocs have finally firmly cemented themselves as like a really good addition to Blue Valley, which I'm like, I low-key thought some shit's gonna happen. <laughs> Something's gonna happen, and I'm not gonna like it, am I? I'm, I'm really like at first I'm like, this didn't feel like cringy because it it it, it was just stylized as like I thought it was Barbara, like just baking a cake. But I'm like, no, that's Tigress. And I'm just like, oh, she's baking cakes now? I'm like, damn, she has become um housewife material. She really has. Uh meanwhile, we're back at the the, the Whitmore Dugan uh household where the um, the family's just trying to find out where Mike and Yakim is. Y Yakim? Oh, Yakim. My bad. Uh, where they are because they haven't returned home or to either of their houses last night because they told um, alternate lies to the other family. So now they're just curious what the hell's going on. They assume that the McKents are behind us after last night, last week's revelations that they are, um, well, they're presuming to be the ones that did steal the, um, that did steal the, um, the uh, well, not steal they, the 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 ones they've, they've been spying on, on them since the beginning of the season, and that's what the assumption is that they probably have them. But of course, obviously, Starman comes in and points out, well, wait a minute, we didn't even know that it was the McKens until, ironically, the moment that Courtney and Cameron were about to like get serious and talk about the superior identity. I was talking about sex, but you know, um, that conveniently there happened to be a massive burst of energy at the McKen house that would have led all of us there. So it's like, it's not out of the realm that maybe the McKens were not really involved in this, that it was just a coup. But of course, Yolanda said, well, if it's not then, who else could it be? And um, this is around the time where we just assume, yeah, we know, well, we assume we know who it is because uh, we're in the forest. Uh, so yeah, um, Jakim and, and Mike have been running away all night from the from the gorilla and they're just wondering what the next move is. They, they're, they're trying to figure out how do we wish ourselves back into Blue Valley right now so we can get away from things. Um, again, they're still trying to figure out what the right words are going to be, but they really can. Uh, eventually, once they have this idea of what the lines could be, um, they get trapped in a bear trap. It turns out to be from Cindy, who has been playing Survivor, in it, sur Survivor and trying to catch the gorilla herself to prove once and for all that, yes, yeah, she's not crazy. Yes, yeah, she can be trustworthy, but also she's just staying, her, she's just staying away from the others right now until she can bring back something 
to prove herself, which is the gorilla. Um, and the, the boys are just trying to tell her, like, you know, you, you should come back with us. You know, we, we really would need you. And she's like, no, I'm not coming back until like the, the situation's handled. Uh, once she kind of tells them, get the hell out of here now, because, you know, you're just, you're hurting our style. You're hurting my plans right now to get this gorilla. Um, they wish themselves back in the diner. So they're back home. Um, I want to say afterwards, Bev's parents are treating up, um, Rick, Rick's injuries from Icicle. He had Icicle Jr. Let's call him. I forgot Cameron. Um, you know, the, I honestly was surprised. Like he left a pretty decent mark on him. Like it's all like red and bruised on that side. Uh, however, his heart ele elevation and, you know, his blood pressure is still pretty high, even though the battle's over indicated that yes, the hourglass is, um, Side effects are starting to seep in. Um, at the moment, Beth is pleading to him to uh, take it off so that he could probably regulate himself, but he doesn't agree. He doesn't agree with it, so it's fine um, that you know to leave him alone. So he leaves. I want to say afterwards that we get to. I mean, we're kind of all over the place here. Um, yeah. So um, the um, Mike now Pat and. Um, Sylvester decides to pay the McKenzie a visit. Uh, more specifically, Grandpa. Not actually, not yet. So we get we get a hospital visit with the with the McKens. Uh, Grandma McKen is still trying to plague Coy on camera, like saying that you know, okay, but you know the truth about that. You know they all have powers. They're all superhero, and they were responsible for killing your dad. So you need you need to do the right thing right now and go talk to Courtney. So he does. He actually listens and goes to go find Courtney uh, while Grandma McKen decides to take her um, to gr Grandpa home. Uh, which is when when Pat and Sylvester show up. It's only um, Grandpa McKen because Grandma McKen wanted to go get supplies for his recovery. Um, and honestly, of the two, he's the more reasonable one to talk to. He's the one that like literally is like kind of like the saint. He is like the most easiest one to talk to. And yeah, he's getting their point that like, listen, I don't want arguments. I I don't want conflict. But you killed my son. Like you know, your team killed my son. I can't let that go. This isn't something that, you know. What is easy for me to admit, you know, I can't just let this go because all of my family's history, we've been attacked by people like you, people who have been against our family for one reason or another. When we're just trying to live, we really are. And yeah, my son may have done some messed up things, but he's still my son. You know, I can't forgive you all for that. And he's like, Look, unless you're here to make to make real amends, like, you know, just get out. Otherwise, next time we meet you should bring your entire team because you you will take us on and fight us like the rest. And Sylvester being the more aggressive one here, um, the more more the instigator, he's like, I welcome the challenge to take a turn on you, which I'm like, damn, Sylvester. Damn. Like, you go, you're off for two weeks. You're still on your energy. Like, it's a very, it's a very direct forward um, um, message to them that's saying that, yeah, I'm, I will go after you if I want to. Uh, meanwhile, I think we get to the scene where, like, Courtney talks to Cameron and, you know, at first they're just trying to talk about just the powers and just, you know, understand like the team. But Cameron's more concerned about, you knew that my dad was killed by your team. You, to you, you But you never told me. And of course, Courtney's saying like, I didn't want to ruin your picture of your father because you didn't know about this. So maybe it was better for you never to know. And he's like, that's not your decision to make. What you can do to at least get a little bit of my sympathy back is to tell me who killed him. Who was the exact one to kill him? And Courtney can't, doesn't want to tell him that it was Mike because he fears that Mike might be targeted by Cameron if he does. And remember, Mike has absolutely no power, so he has no he has no chance in that fight. Um, he doesn't. She doesn't. At first, she's like he's being he's pressuring her like tell me now or this is over with. And she just says it was me. I killed him. I'm the one who who put the blow on him. And he still said the same thing, like, you know, like, get away from me. Don't talk to me ever again. I never want to see you again. So he leaves and, you know, leaves it at that. And, you know, Courtney had to make that sacrifice because to protect her her brother. So she made the right call there. Uh, Mike and Yakeem um, head back to the to the, um, to the the auto shop. They meet up with um, Pat and, and Sylvester, who are, you know, thrilled by their return. And they return with the information that, like, yeah, they were attacked by a, an albino gorilla. And they both have that, you know, both of them look at each other like, it's that guy. And they're like, who's that guy? It's like the one of the most dangerous villains that the JSA has ever fought in their history. But we'll cut to that. Cut, cut that back to a second. Um, the Crocs decide to take a visit um, at the McKent's, realizing that like, yeah, they're they're kind of in on the good side with the others. They're not part of the team, but like, you know, they want to help out as much as they can. So uh, they go to talk to them about like, you know, maybe making a peace deal, like trying to find some sort of like middle ground. Like, you know, this is the next generation. We all made mistakes. 
you know, I think now's the time, you know, when all the dust is settled to like put an end to things and just, you know, live life peacefully and just not, never, you know, talk about it. But Grandma McKenna makes the same um, argument that like, you know, y'all, st they still kill our son. How do we let that go? How do we just forget about that? Our son was murdered and we got to just like live with those people in the same town for the, for the rest of our days. Like it isn't something they're comfortable with, which I, I understand that, that fact as well. Uh, but even after when the Crocs leave, they're looking to each other like, Maybe they're right. Maybe it is time we move forward from this and actually, you know, try to accept things the way they are and try not to be malicious or anything. So um, they're, I think they have that breakthrough over there with that moment. Uh, I'm, trying to figure, I'm trying to figure out if there was any other scenes of importance beforehand. I don't think there was. I really don't think there was. Um, I'm, 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 really, I'm, I'm trying to struggle to think right now. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, actually, no, there was, um, uh, there was a scene where, um, when, when Sylvester and Pat went to go see Grandpa McKen, Grandma McKen went to, um, the Whitmore Duke and said, almost prepared to kill Barbara, but, um, Tigress, once again, is playing creepy stalker, um, st saves her by shooting a couple of dart arrows at her, which allows her to, um, survive and, and the, uh, for the other one to escape. And she informs her, like, yeah, she, you might still get repeat business from her, so it's better you're trained with a weapon so you can defend yourself if no one else is around to protect you. So um, they head out to the field. And it's also, like, again, I know it's trying to be, like, a tr like a, a scene where, like, these two are just expressing that they are friends. And even she says, like, you are my only friend. Like, I, I need to help you. I need to protect you. Uh, or help get, get yourself more protected so that if anything does happen, you can take care of yourself. Again, which... Despite the messed up history between them, it is pretty sweet that, like, you know, she still is caring about her in that way. That, you know, that there's still that um, that middle ground interest over there. That they do care about each other, regardless of their very also oh different backgrounds. Uh, but we're back at the Whitmore Dugan house. It's a JSA meeting. Um, they they talk about the albino gorilla that Mike and Joaquin ran into. Which turns out to be one of the most dangerous villains that the JSA has ever faced. The Ultra Humanite. Which... Uh, when the JSA were first starting out, they assumed this was just a regular low-class criminal for them to take down. It turned out to be a very much more um, intellectual per being than they thought. Um, this person had the ability or had the skill to transfer his body, to transfer his um, mind into another um, being. So for a while, he transported his body into an actress for many years, acting under the guise of her until, she, until they eventually discovered her. But before... Um, they, he, she, he, he was finally apprehended or they assume he was about to be apprehended. Uh, he teamed up with the dragon King to develop a perfect body for him, a, a body that will not age, a body that will be super strong, that could fight the JSA all on his own. So they created an, an, an albino mutant gorilla to, um, be this perfect body. So, but they don't know, um, a, how many times he's done this and B, uh, where he was since the events of their last encounter. So he has returned. To what exact motive, to why this exact moment, we don't entirely know 100%, but Sylvester just assumes, like, yeah, JSA is back together. That He just assumes, like, this is another crack for him to take us down. So that's just what they're assuming the uh, motivation factor is, which, again, there's still so much we don't know about this guy. So there's still so much more to f figure out. Again, there's still so many question marks still raring to go for answers. So we'll just see how that goes. Um, and this is, I, I kind of didn't like the scene where, like, Courtney was just basically expressing like, yeah, this is the next big threat we need to go back to. We need to fight this all together. It kind of reminded me of like pre, uh, early season two, Courtney, who was like very gung ho of like, oh great. We got another big back to fight. All right, let's do this. Let's get a team ready. Let's get everything ready to go. Let's go team up and like do this shit. Um, at first, and but how are the way she mentions like similar to how they fought Eclipse. So everyone needs to come together. They need Cameron's power. They need the McKents to join in on this fight against the Abino gorilla. So they have a chance of beating him. Since, yeah, you have a robot, you have st the star powers, you have um, Wildcat, you even have Beth's um, combat mode, and you even have Rick's superpower. But still, at the end of the day, like this is a very powerful albino gorilla that almost killed Starman, so anything is possible. So, yeah, they do need the McKenns over here with this, with this battle. So... Um, at first they're like, this is not a good idea. Cause like, we're, we're not really trustworthy of the McKens, but again, regardless of this right now, this isn't about camera. This isn't about trying to make amends. This is basically trying to protect our lives, protecting the people we care about. And we need everyone that we can to help on this matter. So, um, they all agree on that. that they need to somehow recruit the McKens at some point, somehow for this fight. 
Uh, however, meanwhile, before to wrap up this very, at first, very kind of expositional episode of sorts, we cut back to the Crocs who are heading home after their conversation with the McKenzie, thinking that they actually succeeded in getting through to them about their uh, their ways and seeing if they can improve and not try to get revenge on, t on the JSA. They get a call from Artemis saying that she got in, she got into the university, her dream university, with the dream position. She's living the life. They celebrate briefly on the phone before they agree to like all meet back up at the house and actually celebrate. Uh, however, before the Crocs are able to make their full um, runway to their house, they find an open sewer gate that, let, that, that leads into one of their secret um, entrances for the ISA um, headquartered by Dragon King. So they head in, they're exploring a little bit, um, and they find the mysterious figure who has been actually watching them uh, attack them, uh, having icicle powers. Which I'm like, oh no, 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 please don't tell me yet you did it. So sad to say, this mysterious individual kills Sportsmaster with an icicle dagger. And then as, as Tigress was trying to counterattack, she also gets stabbed with an icicle dagger. Um, realizing, realizing the whole time it was actually Icicle. Icicle was the one that was watching them since the beginning. And um, yeah, that's uh, that was a big like, oh my god moment. Like I was not expecting Icicle's return. I, how is he alive? How is he back? He literally got slammed to pieces by by uh, Mike. So I'm like, I'm really curious to see what the resurrection story is on this front. Like, how did he come back officially? Um, there's still a lot of question. There really is. But um, at the end of the day, yeah, Icicle's back and Ultra Humanoids a thing. So, like, the JSA has, like, really um, one big final battle to take care of, like, you know, with these two friends. Hopefully it is a combined fret than a uh, uh, one by one. I'm hoping that's the case, but we'll see how that ends up being tied into and everything of the sort because there's a lot of conne there's a lot of connections there's a lot of dots that need to be connected and we need to find out those plots Fred soon before the end of the season or the end of the series so we will see how that how that all gets tied up but for now that was at the end of this week's episode of DC Stargirl for me I thought it was really good despite it being a little bit more expositional in nature it definitely um, helped us get into the points of like what are we fighting for now who is our main adversary at this moment how do we fight them and I think in general, just, 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 you know, realizing what you're fighting for is just the theme here. Like, you know, who are you really fighting for? Uh, what are the um, stances you're willing to take to, and what are the things that you're willing to do to protect the people you care about? And I feel like this episode succeeded off. Uh, again, Courtney's line at the end where, where she's trying to say like, you know, we're, we need to team up against this big, big bad. I'm not really a big fan of. It was kind of corny in my opinion, but other than that, I think this episode really, was really good. I felt really bad for the Crocs. Like, I've said so much crap about them this season, saying that they're so cringe and that, you know, I, I'm, I'm so thankful whenever they exit a scene. I guess that was the point I was trying to make, they were trying to make of, like, them being so extra and being so annoying, but then the moment you realize they're gone, that's when you realize that you cared about them. And, yeah, them dying was just definitely not something I'm expecting. Artemis is going to like really like i feel so bad for artemis right now you know i really do like she got her parents back and now they're gone and like this is definitely not like a resurrection type thing and you know there's a lot of people that are, they're gonna fight icicle this is gonna turn out to, if they do this right this is probably gonna be one of the best battles of the se of the series you know by far i'm hopeful they know what they're doing that they're gonna land the ship off correctly and that we're gonna be left with like a final battle that's gonna be remembered for many many years to come uh, but until then, yeah, that was the end. And I can't wait to see what is going to be next with this season. Cause like, I really don't know what is next. Like, you know, they can literally take this now in a dozen amount of ways. And you know, how is this all going to wrap up at the end of the day? I get, I really don't know, but I have faith they will somehow land the ship off correctly. But for now, I'm going to give this episode two thumbs up. Really enjoyed it. Really cannot wait for the end. There's still so much more to go. Three more episodes left. Uh, but yeah, but let me in the comments below. What did you think of this week's episode of Stargirl? Um, let's have that conversation down below because I always would like to converse with you about these episodes. But I believe that's going to do it for me today, everyone. So if you're unaware, this has been What's the Two from Action X reviewing every episode in the third season of DC Stargirl. If you want to know what we're doing normally, What's the Two beside our Stargirl episode reviews. We are currently doing Walker episode reviews, Walker Independence episode reviews, and the Rookie Feds episode reviews each and every week after brand new episodes on ABC and the CW. We also did the Rookie episode reviews, but we're on break until December, so 
Nothing to report on that front. But if you don't care about Stargirl, you're in luck. We'll be back next week with another brand new episode review. So stay tuned until then. Uh, just a reminder how we're going to do things at, at the end of this term. We are doing the last three episode reviews for the season slash the series. And then we will be doing a season three review, spoiler free edition, after the final episode of the show airs the following week. And then we will talk about the future future after, the, or even though Stargirl will be off the air after December. Uh, but again, this has been What's the Two from Action X. Please subscribe to us on YouTube.com slash Action videos. Ring that bell for the notification where our next episode review is live. Please also like, favorite, share this review if you want to. Please also ring the bell and follow us on social media to stay up to date with any sort of updates we may have for either of our channels. But until we see each other again, for all you star girls out there, I'll see y'all next week for the next episode review. But until then, stay safe out there, be good to each other, and as always, peace out.